2022 has turned into an incredible year for gaming. You got more VR, you have Sony titles continuing to roll out finally on PCs and surprise after surprise across the entire market, including Game Pass. How does December fare and has anybody really kept anything for this last month of the year? Sit on back and let's discuss some of the big games coming out in December, as well as maybe a few you haven't heard of. Up first, High on life. And pretty much like the creators, they don't even know when they're coming out. It just says December by Squanch Games. High on life was created by Justin Rowland and his imagination that is a little bit out there. Of course, he's from Rick and Morty. Alien drug traffickers pose a danger to humanity because they wish to exploit humanity's addiction to their products, which we've seen in other cartoons reflected. But this is a game where you get to play through it. And this is where things start to get interesting. Talking firearms team up with you to defeat the bad guy and save the planet. You've just graduated from high school. You have no plans for the future. So when an extraterrestrial drug cartel invades Earth, of course, you decide, let's do this. Now's your time to be the hero and become the deadliest interstellar bounty hunter the galaxy has ever seen with the help of the talking firearms. I think we can all admit the last gameplay footage and trailer for this looked all kinds of janky, but the ideas that they have reminds me of Stranger's Wrath. Talking guns, probably consistently calling you names, is something I actually really enjoyed in that game, and I can't wait to see it here. Will we get bored or tired? Will it have too much attitude, like games that always say they have attitude and advertise it? Possibly, but rumors from behind the scenes is that they're trying to make sure this is actually backed up by true gameplay throughout the entire thing, and I still want to see it. The idea of moving between all these worlds, like the city inside of the asteroid, could be awesome, and depending on the weapons and their uses. And the idea that some of these guns might shine a light on the flexibility of a player's ability when you're holding a gun that shoots bullets that talk or distract other enemies, this could be awesome to see. I do also like the graphical style, but we'll just have to cross our fingers that this one holds out and turns out to be something very, very fun. This next one, no one needs an introduction to Marvel Midnight Suns, December 2nd. You're going to be a superhero. You get to play like a pro, but you're the amateur. This is one of the first times you take on the role of the hunter, a demon slayer tasked with rallying a group of superheroes together and supernatural warriors to face dangers, but you can adjust your character and basically create them yourself. Midnight Suns has a card-based tactic that combines all of the different character interactions, customizations, and growth that are in normal RPGs, and then mixes it with the turn-based battle that you would see in an XCOM game. Playing in a universe where the demonic powers of all of these ancient evils are coming after you, and you get to form this group, sit down, talk to them, and have RPG moments at your base, and then go out and kick the ever-living crap out of a bunch of mystical bad guys is awesome. I've got hands-on with this, and I can't talk too much about it, but as you play on the role of this character that you can adjust, you can adjust their look, decide how they respond in different scenarios when you're doing your RPG abilities, as well as deciding who within the team you're actually going to get along with. These RPG chops in this game are far deeper than it may just show on some of the trailers. You get to choose and build up your companions, go on different quests, customize your adventure, pretty much any way you want and then continue to go out to fight evil and then come back to upgrade your characters. Another thing to understand about Midnight Suns is that the card system isn't just a replacement for XCOM style turn-based action. It's actually a mending of it. It's just that the way it doles out moves can be attached to the characters themselves and what cards that they can use. Also, putting people together and the idea of companionship in this game is through the roof. The idea of putting one character with another where maybe both by themselves aren't necessarily too cool, but their synergy is tremendous is something you will notice right from the start of this game. And that's pretty much all I can say of that. Well, other than hold on to your butts. I'm sure a lot of people are going to like that game. But the next up that a ton of people are going to like, that we've been hearing about for years, that's built on the very demonic, evil, alien bones of past horror games, Callisto Protocol, coming out December 2nd. This is from the makers of Dead Space, baby. Don't call it a comeback. They are here. They're going to go out there and try to do something creative in that space. You get to see a single person in the darkest womb-like designs of an evil Jupiter's dead moon, which is, of course, Callisto. It's this narrative-driven third-person survival game. It's also set 300 years in the future. So we're going to see this weird slum-like location in jail, but at the same time, the technology of the future, which we see rings true in some of the weapons. You're going to be Jacob Lee, a victim of fate who's been thrown into Black Iron Prison. This is a maximum security penitentiary that's actually on Jupiter's moon, Callisto. So if you don't like somebody, the easiest way to get rid of them 
is take them to a different planet. When the inmates begin to transform into all these creatures, the prison's thrown into chaos, and Jacob escapes. Well, he escapes his cell. The rest of the time, as a survivor, you have to battle your way out to try to escape the entire Black Iron prison, while uncovering all these deep and dark and disturbing secrets that are bound within the surface of Callisto, which hasn't always, and may still not just be, a prison. Using a unique blend of shooting and close quarters combat that we can see in the trailers, Jacob gets to adapt all of his tactics to combat these different creatures and people that he's met before that might have turned into something a little bit weird. You scavenge, you unlock new gear, new quests, and you get the ability to try to figure out how are you going to escape an entire moon. One of the great things about this is Glenn Schofield has said that the game is a next generation take on survival horror. So finding out what that means to him versus what the original games and when they came out and the gameplay styles that were there is going to be awesome. I have an idea and I've seen some of it and it certainly looks like they've thrown a couple of the things that we expect in survival horror a little bit on their side. And those are the kind of games that once you play them, you look back and go, wow, what was I doing prior to this? You have your evil, your dark atmosphere, your tension, brutality, all of these different moments, and we've seen a lot in this trailer. You're going to have traps, different enemies, and of course, a ton of horror. So if you're one of those people who gets scared when you're playing these kind of games, might be one you invite a friend over. While you may think that you're going to have some heartless thug as the main character with nothing but, you know, a pole, the Callisto Protocol is trying to really challenge players as well to master all of the hand-to-hand -hand and ranged combat, including what I was talking about before, which is the unique weapons of the future, including a gravity gun that was used by the Black Iron Guards to control the prison population. One of the easiest ways to stop somebody is to turn a 250-pound man into a 1,250-pound man as they drop to the ground because they can't support themselves. Players are going to be forced to get up and close and personal and as well as master the range. This just looks awesome. They've got limb dismemberment, and it looks to be a title that will also have a lot that hinges on investment. Investigation, which I think is one of the best parts that sometimes the horror games skew a little bit away from, where they go towards just saying, hey, there's something scary. And when you ask what it is, they're like, nah, something happened years ago. That one is coming out soon. I cannot wait, as you can tell. And here's another one you probably didn't think was going to be on my list. This is Ixium. It's out on the 7th. It, it's a space opera. You're going to be traveling the galaxy, but you're going to also be creating cities, fighting, discovering new worlds. You're the administrator of a space station, and you're actually tasked with finding a new home across these different planets, maintaining the station's airworthiness, also bringing in different new supplies and people and keeping an eye and balancing your power usage as well as your food and all of the different resources. I like this idea because because in a lot of games, you just continually build out. No matter what, if you run out of something, you find a tree somewhere. We've all played Age of Empires. And even though this game isn't exactly like that, we know how a lot of times they roll out. This is going to be one of those titles where... You're going to be in deep space, so there's probably going to be some tough choices to make. And if you haven't been following the game, you'll realize there's a lot of morale and a lot of different PR that you have to take care of. You have to make sure that the people that you're controlling and the people, well, that you might be helping all believe in your overall ideal of what's going on in the future. You have six sectors that you can unlock in the massive station to make room for more people create new occupations, and allow for you to go out there and see what's in deep space as you're traveling to a place that you hope will be safe for the people on board. If you're a fan of the old Sim games, this also has a version of Disasters, even though it won't necessarily be called that. Defective hulls, asteroid strikes, overloaded generators, electrical fires, and maybe, maybe some sabotage. Whenever that kind of stuff comes up, there's usually someone that doesn't agree with everybody else. And you get those tight, close quarter moments. And it feels a little bit like the remake of Battlestar Galactica, where everybody's looking over everybody's shoulder, while at the same time, they're all trying to pretend like they're friends. This is a title that I'm super excited for, and it just looks like it offers something different. But the next one is one I know offers something different, and that is Blacktail by Parasite SA, and this is coming out on the 15th. I did a preview, hands-on, hours on this game. Check it out in the links. From the legend and forming the legend of Baba Yaga. Not the one from the John Wick, but the actual original girl accused of witchcraft and expelled from her home. You live out the origins of the actual myth itself one day at a time, going out there, actually using a lot of survival elements like archery combat, and then mixing in quests and story to tell this fairy tale over again with you as the main character. You become the guardian of the woods or the terror and 
what nightmares are made of. You get to choose. You get to forge the legend of the character themselves when they're kicked out and you start taking on quests from the characters that are out in the forest. The game was an utter surprise to me. You work through this gorgeous forest, never 100% sure what you were doing. Was it good or bad? Because there's a lot of choices that you have to make in this game. The Baba Yaga Hut consistently remembers and judges you on how you did. And sometimes you hear these disembodied voices telling you that maybe just working for yourself is better than helping anybody else. And it actually makes sense. You take jobs from massive mushrooms, weird forest creatures, and meet up with Alice in Wonderland style characters throughout the entire title. This is one that I really enjoyed my preview of. One thing to remember is the combat is a bit light in this game. You're going to see how the full game plays out when it comes out, but it is a title where, yes, you have a bow and an arrow and you do fight some enemies and you do have to hunt and get survival, kill some deer, that kind of stuff. It is not one that has you consistently rail sliding on your shield like an elf and taking out five bad guys. But what I play personally, the many hours of Blacktail, that is one I cannot wait to see the finished product. So anyway, that's it for me. What I'd like to know is the games that you guys are looking for. There are some other games you guys may have noticed. I didn't cover Unbound, I don't believe, in the November one. I was going to cover it in this one if I hadn't, but I didn't go look back at the November one to see. Especially when you look at uh, Need for Speed Unbound, it's right there, right after or around Thanksgiving. So a lot of people actually consider it a December game. I tried to annihilate that and just identify the games that are very much coming December 1st through the end of this year and just do it that way. So if there's titles that I missed, put them in the comments. I would love to know. If you get a chance, check out any of these titles I've covered in the links. Subscribe, like, whatever you want to do. I hope you have a wicked Thanksgiving. And because of some of these games, an incredible December. Peace out. Check out the patrons.